What's up guys? I got a really good question on my AMAs on Instagram and I wanted to actually answer it in more detail so I'm going to do a YouTube video to kind of give you an idea of what I look for in a coach. Now the question was, if I'm not an athlete with top tier genetics, should I be looking for a top tier coach? And the first thing that comes to my mind is, well, what do you mean by top tier? And I think generally when people say that, they either mean a coach who has a lot of followers, a coach who has worked with high level athletes, or a coach who is high level themselves as an athlete. And all of those do tend to be factors that show a coach has experience. In my opinion, experience is only one of the things that makes a good coach. And I think if you're looking at three things in particular, they should be experience, education, and communication. So I want to break all those down and say exactly what I mean, and hopefully help you to find better uh, advice for your own training goals. So experience, you know, I've kind of touched on that. Um, but one thing I want to highlight in particular is that experience doesn't just mean you've had success in one narrow field. If you have a person who has done great things as an athlete, they probably know how to work with themselves and their own bodies. They might not necessarily know how to work with you and your body. The same thing, if they only work with men or they only work with women, they only work with high-level lifters or only work with low-level lifters, um, there's nothing wrong with having a niche, but if you haven't had a breadth of experience as a coach, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to find a solution for an athlete who has uh, the uh, individual needs, right? And everybody has individual needs. So I think that breadth of experience is just as important as depth. The second thing is education. And trust me, I don't mean formal education. It's coming from a guy with a PhD in the history of lifting. Not that important, formal education. Uh, you just have a very limited amount of material to work with when it comes to actual research. And this is not meant a knock by any means on you know the guys who are very well educated. You guys know I'm a huge fan of the Renaissance Periodization team. I have tons of respect for guys like Lane Norton. Um, I could name a handful of other guys who have a lot of formal education. Uh, but that's not necessarily good enough. And the reason for that is there's a lot of tacit knowledge in the strength conditioning field. And even more when you look at sports like powerlifting, bodybuilding, uh, things that don't have a lot of research around them at all, uh, there's so much that you can't learn from a book. You can't learn from a, from a, in a classroom. And I'm linking the description below to my video that explains exactly why that is. But uh, you shouldn't be looking at formal education. You should be looking at uh, education as a whole. So sure, what college degrees do they have? That's great. But also, what other coaches have they worked with themselves, right? Um, you know, what coaches have they visited, spoken with? Who do they, who's in their network? All these things are really important. And I'm not saying you need to go to your coach and you need to give them a, you know, an intensive interrogation by any means. But, you know, it's pretty easy on social media to see, okay, who does this person interact with? What type of content do they like? What's their general approach uh, to a training philosophy going to be? And if you are look, working with coaches, that's a great question to ask. What's your training philosophy? If they can't summarize that, you know, in a sentence or two, well, that, that's something that I would question. And then finally, uh, you have communication. And for me, this is the biggest part. You have to be able to communicate with your coach, especially, especially if they're an online coach. Um, because in any relationship, communication is a key. Is key. Right? It's key to success. And uh, a coach-athlete relationship is, is much like other types of relationships. So uh, I'm not saying your coach has to be your best friend, uh, but I am saying that you need to be able to convey your thoughts, your feelings, your experiences, your questions in a way uh, that gets your point across. And the coach needs to be able to do the exact same thing with regard to their advice. This is something you should be able to tell very, very quickly. And if you can't, you might not be at the level where you even need a coach yet, all right? Um, you might need more experience yourself before you've graduated to that point. And I think that's pretty rare. I think most people do have a pretty good, uh, you know, intuition for what type of communication they respond well to. Um, but it's very, very important. And I would say if I had to pick out one thing that's the most important, it would be that. So those are my top three. Obviously, there's a lot more. Um, you know, I think a coach's passion says a lot about how hard they're going to work, how much they care about their athletes. Uh, you know, I think, and again, there's something to be said for the flip side too. You, your coach, again, not necessarily your friend. Your coach should be somebody that's uh, guiding you, um, but it's a business for them. It's always going to be, and it should be a business for you too. If you take your career as an athlete seriously, you need to have some sort of um, emotional distance from your training and from the feedback that you're provided. 
Uh, and then, you know, I could get into all sorts of other things, you know, um, what types of gyms do they train at? Uh, if somebody who trains at a powerlifting gym is probably going to have a different mentality as somebody who trains at a bodybuilding gym. There's tons of nuances like that, uh, that, that all go into a coach. But I think that uh, those big, big three things, if you got those three things down and you can feel that your coach does those three things very well or has a good background in those three areas, I think you can be pretty confident that you're working with a good person.